Why is it it's, that it's been only in the last 400 years or since contact with Europeans that we've had all these problems? How did we create all these beautiful societies? How did we uh, create um, all of these beautiful languages with these complex social institutions without welfare, without transfer payments? It's ridiculous to think that you can put your future in the hands of any government organization and have them have your best interests at heart. I mean, it's a total myth. It's a myth for Indians or Aboriginal people, and it's a myth for everybody else in society on welfare. And even if, if the government could give you the material sustenance you need, there's something a government can't give you. It can't give you your sense of self-worth. What you don't get when you get a welfare check is you get your ability to have your material sustenance, but you don't get the ability to validate your sense of self-worth. It bypasses that. It bypasses the, mo the psychological payoff that's most important to us. So if I give you an Olympic gold medal right now, I give you a real one, you wouldn't be weeping and screaming and saying, I've won and I've won because it's psychologically meaningless to you. You didn't do the work that, that was required to get that. You have to own your situation in your heart and your soul and your mind because the, the truth of the matter is it's human nature that no one else can have your self-interest in mind. If you want to be successful, you have to be self-responsible. And what I'm talking about is going from what I call the economic dependency mindset to the empowerment mindset. This book was actually written for the American market and uh, it was written uh, for the American market because um, I'm trying to launch what I'm doing on a, on a worldwide platform. It is a guideline. That, that's the whole purpose of the book. Uh, you know, it's not an adventure story. It's, uh, not a bedroom uh, extravaganza, it's, it's strictly on how you gain independence, which is more important than any of that other stuff. I think it's very global. The timeliness of it in a world that's faced with a, a huge you know, um, recession uh, that has people looking at corporates with a, at a new, in a new light. Um, there's no faith and trust in corporates in many sense. At the same time, when you look down at the, the, the poorer populations, if you like, they can no longer be sustained uh, by payment from government handouts. The real problem at the end of the day with this whole social welfare system is it's not sustainable. Take the US for example, you've got 80 million people getting set to retire. We're in a situation where in the 1950s there were 16 workers to one retiree. By the time those 80 million people re retire, it'll be two to one. Who's going to carry the weight of all of the, the social welfare programs? Calvin has enunciated the sort of uh, demographic tsunami that's heading your way. And if you're, not, if you're paying $9 billion now, you'll be paying $80 billion in the future in welfare payments if you let it go this way. Now that wakes people up, <laughs> you know. By 2020 in the U.S., uh, the white population will grow by 1%, Native American by 26%, uh, the uh, African American by 38%, and the Hispanic by 77 percent. That population is already the biggest user of very expensive social welfare programs. Um, this ain't going to work. The writing's on the wall. We've got to do something different. What your Uncle Calvin is doing is putting the issues on the table, rattling the cages, shaking the skeletons, and making people wake up that is this the future they want for their, for their, for their grandchildren to come? Surely not. It isn't just about your life now, it's about what you're leaving behind, it's about the legacy. So at least from a practical sense, to move and shake those people who sit there and say, I don't want you coming to take my welfare benefit. They say, well, what about your grandchildren? There'll be some who say, what oh, the hell with that, I'm living now. But there'll be many who say, yeah, there's some virtue in that, what can we do? It has to start by people doing it, not talking about it. Uh, you know, again, William James said that uh, one of the greatest uh, discoveries of his generation was that you can change your life by changing your attitude. Um, it's important to understand that uh, you're in charge of your life. Uh, the power to change your life rests entirely with you. And so out of this, I think, 
I believe, I truly believe, has come a very, not just a good book, but a very important book. In fact, an essential book, which is going to uh, become um, the Bible of change of cultures. It's, it's, it's quite brilliant timing, actually. It's not, not really the reform of a system, it's, it's a revolution. And the sooner the people realize that, the better. It really is timely. It asks people to sort of look and cross the bridges in a number of ways. And uh, I applaud that.